The principal tobacco growing areas of the world are found in the United States of America, in India, in Soviet Russia, in China, and in the Balkans and round the Aegean Sea. Other smaller areas are found in Cuba, in Java, in Brazil, and in southern Rhodesia. Tobacco is grown in southern Rhodesia in four areas around Salisbury. The climate in southern Rhodesia is hot in the daytime, but cool at night. There's a heavy rainfall in the summer months whilst the plants are growing. After the rains, the hot sun ripens the tobacco. Suitable soil is the most important factor in tobacco growing, and the Rhodesian grower often has to clear forest land to provide the right sort of soil for his plants. Let's look for a moment at a typical tobacco farm to see how people live and work there. This large house or homestead belongs to the tobacco grower. He is the most important person on the farm. His native labourers live in huts some way away from the other buildings. Each day they work in the fields which lie all round the farm. When the tobacco is grown and ripened, they carry it into the curing barn. The young tobacco plants are grown and tended in specially prepared seed beds. At the beginning of the year, the natives work on the seed beds, preparing them for the spring sowing. First, they cover the narrow beds with brushwood and then set fire to the wood. The branches and twigs flare up, destroying any pests that may be in the soil. The fire burns out, leaving only a fine wood ash, which is hoed into the soil to make it more fertile. The seed beds are sown at different times, so that all the crop will not ripen at once. The grower supervises the sowing. Tobacco seed is in the form of a fine powder and the best method of sowing it is to put a teaspoonful of seed into a watering can and then pour the mixture onto the seed bed. After sowing, the beds are covered with grass to protect the seeds from the fierce sun and from insects. This covering is raised on sticks as soon as the young plants appear and they are watered two or three times a day. The plants continue to grow until they are ready for transplanting from the beds to the fields. The fields themselves are ploughed up ready to receive the plants. After the first ploughing, the fields are harrowed and then ploughed again so that the soil is thrown up in long ridges across the field. Natives go along these ridges with hoes and measuring sticks, marking out the positions for the young plants. Other natives follow, putting a handful of fertiliser on the same spot. At the seed beds, the young plants are dug up for transplanting.
the plants are laid on a sort of stretcher called a mashila and covered with sackcloth. Before the grower can transplant his plants, he must wait for overcast or rainy weather. When conditions are favorable, the mashila is carried to the tobacco field. Native women and children take handfuls of the plants and walking along between the ridges, they drop them onto the positions already marked out. The men follow up behind, putting the plants into the ground. After each one has been planted, it's given a quick pull to make sure that it's firmly rooted. After a few weeks, the plants have grown up and must be cultivated. The natives snap off the lower leaves to strengthen the remainder of the plant. Then they run a ridge plough down between the rows to loosen the soil at the base of the plant. Later on, the plants come into flower. The best of the flower heads must be kept for next year's seed. The grower ties a paper bag round a number of the flower heads and the rest are broken off and thrown away so that the strength of the plant goes into the leaves. Reaping begins soon after and the natives reap each ripe leaf off the plants. Pickanins collect piles of leaves and carry them to the mashila. Each plant is reaped three or four times before the stalk is bare and the lowest leaves are always pulled first. When the mashila is piled high with leaves, it's covered with sackcloth and carried to a wagon. The wagon is then driven to the curing barns. The mashila is unloaded and carried to the tying shed. Two boys pass the tobacco leaves back to the tying boy, who ties them onto a stick so that the leaves hang down on either side. When the sticks are full, natives carry them into the curing barns. The curing barns are tall buildings with racks arranged all the way up their height. The sticks of tobacco are placed on them, and when the barn is full, curing begins. The leaves are dried in a temperature of 85 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and the furnace is fired with coal or wood. This curing lasts about four to five days until the leaves turn a bright yellow color. They are taken out of the barns and carried to another shed where they are untied and laid in piles. Here they are left to mature for some weeks. Then native women grade the tobacco according to the quality of each leaf. The graded leaves are tied in separate bundles 
and placed in a box. Finally, they are pressed into bales, ready to be sent to Salisbury for sale there. The year's work is now over, but soon it'll be spring again and the natives will begin work on a new crop, sowing, transplanting, cultivating, reaping and curing. In Salisbury, the tobacco grower must find a buyer and then arrange for his crop to be sold by auction. It is then shipped to England. Arriving in England, the tobacco is unloaded and dispatched to the manufacturers. Once in the factories, it's turned into cigarettes and pipe tobacco for British customers throughout the country. <laughs> 